morning everybody it's Tom Christie back in the painting studio and uh, this morning I thought I would do a painting related video I've done quite a few carving sequences and we'll I'll continue to do that as I carve other birds but I did get a suggestion from a viewer that painting white on white is a challenging uh, painting task especially for people that are not familiar with uh, painting. I, I find that a lot of carvers uh, know how to carve and can, can kind of do that intuitively, but the painting part is the toughest part for if you're just not used to uh, using paints and kind of artistic concepts on paint mi mixing. So we'll do a video on uh, white on white and I also want to do black on black. They're very similar in the in the approach, but there are some differences that I think I just thought it would be helpful. I, I sell painting videos on my uh, website, tomchristieart.com. There are 14 different uh, birds over there that, uh, and th those are about 50 minutes long and you can purchase those, but not everybody is going to want to do that. So I thought, these uh, YouTube videos are free, so I would demonstrate how I would paint white on white. And I'm going to use old Fred here. Uh, Fred is a foam decoy uh, that I've used for many, many demonstrations over, over the years. So you've probably got 10 coats of paint on him or her. Um, this was the bird I used for the combing vermiculation. If you haven't checked that out, you might want to refer to that video for that painting technique. I also did a hen feather painting technique video with Fred. And now we're going to do white on white and black on black with Fred and give him a new uh, coat today. So if you're enjoying and getting value out of my channel, Please hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost anything to do that, but it does help me out. And then it uh, will put you, if you want to be notified of new content as I add it to the, to the site, uh, you can select that and, and you'll get notifications. So you get early notice of things, that, new content that's going up. So let's uh, work with Fred here and take a look at white on white and black on black painting for decoys. Okay, to get started, I first want to put a base coat on the bird, and this is a combination of Liquitex heavy body acrylic paint, probably 90% and then 10% white gesso to, to make this uh, toothpaste-like coating material. And I'm going to paint that on Fred here with a wide brush. Like I said, I've painted over Fred many times, so this is one more coat going on. I'm just spreading that paint out. I'm going to do this quick. I might take my time a little bit more if this were a commission or a competition bird. I'm going to take some paint, put it on my palette, and I'm using a close-celled sponge material that is basically packing sponge. And if you look at the things you buy, sometimes they'll be in packing sponge in the packaging, and you can just save that and use it for this purpose. This puts a little bit of a texture on the bird. And you might ask, well, what's that got to do with white on white painting? Just the way I paint decoys, I like to put a little bit of a texture on the decoy and it lends itself to the dry brush techniques that I'll be showing you on this white and white demonstration. So I wanna get that little bit of a pebbly texture on there first. And then I'll dry that with a hair dryer Hair dryer really speeds things up with acrylic paint. Um, so I'll get that dried and then we'll come back. 
All right, we've got the base coat sponged on. Fred's head came off, so he'll remain headless through the rest of the demonstration, but it's okay, because I made uh, Fred's head to be able to be removed for a flotation demonstration, so he's been through a lot. Anyway, our first step on white on white is to mix a base color of white that is, I call it off-white. It's going to be a slightly darker value of white. And then we'll use bright white gesso or titanium white or warm white, a brighter white for the highlights on the feathers. But let's talk about mixing that base white, off-white color first. All right, I put several... Uh, spots of paint on the palette here and uh, this may not show up great in the video but I'm going to give it a shot anyway. This is white gesso. This is titanium white so it's a touch brighter than white gesso. Liquitex white gesso. This is raw umber and this is raw sienna, Jos Josanya colors. This is the value that I want for the base. So you can see there it's slightly darker than both of these. And this is a mixture of Liquitex Gesso and Raw Umber. So if we do that on the palette, it just takes a touch of the Raw Umber to knock this value down to this off-white that I'm using for the base. And if you go too far, add too much raw umber, it's going to get too brown. If you have too much uh, Josanya or Liquitex gesso, it may be too bright and there's not enough contrast when we go to highlight the feathers. So what I like to do is pre-mix in a container my off-white color in bulk so that I get a good amount of it that I can use to paint on the bird once I get the color mix right. That way you're not having to mix on the palette all the time and trying to match that color every time you go back to the bird. So. Uh, you can also add, I put raw sienna on the palette because it's kind of a personal preference thing. You may want to add a little bit of raw sienna and that has a tendency to warm up the white. I probably put too much in there. Again, this is kind of personal preference and you'll see a lot of different people use different mixes for this base off-white color. You, you can see that is a little warmer. I call it value than this. For the purposes of this demonstration, I, I did want to show you that you can warm up your colors with the raw sienna. Add a little bit of a yellow and makes it more creamy colored. You may want to go with that. Again, depends on what you're looking for. For this demonstration, I'm going to use just Liquitex Gesso with a touch of raw umber for this off-white base. So I'm using that pre-mixed off-white and just a kind of a chisel-shaped one-inch brush. And I'm going to paint it probably two coats to cover this uh, textured gray. So I'll get those coated twice so you don't just watch me move the brush around because that doesn't have much value. All right, I've got that base coated. And this, by the way, is a technique I would use for any bird with a a white side pocket, like um, a scop 
or golden eye or a buffle head and also for a white breast like on a, a shoveler drake you can use this technique all right i've got my off-white another note uh, paint acrylic paint tends to dry slightly darker than when you put it on wet so you want to make sure you check your value after the paint is dry and see if you're happy with it if it's too dark just add a little of the white gesso to the mix and lighten things up a bit if it's too bright add a little more raw umber and in your second coat uh, just get the value that you're looking for and I know that's a judgment call, especially if you don't have experience, but you can play around with it. Um, you just want to see some contrast between the brighter whites and this off-white value. Now I'm going to use my charcoal pencil. You can get, this is white charcoal pencil. You can get it at uh, Dick Blix or uh, Jerry's Artorama. Any art supply, Michael's would probably have these. And I'm just penciling in some feathers so that we have something to work with. Some shapes. Hopefully you can see those in the, in the video, but you can see that my white pencil is a little brighter than the off-white base coat. So it's starting to show up, and that's what we're going to do in the paint as well. So I'll just throw a few more feathers on here for good measure. All right. Now I'm going to use my Liquitex gesso and a detail brush and kind of a watered down mix so that I don't create a hard line on the surface here that I can't paint over later. But the uh, gesso has a little bit of a softer, not quite as bright white as titanium white, so I like to use the uh, white gesso for this highlighting. And you can see I'm just going around the uh, chalk lines that I put in place and laying in the feathers. And you don't have to use chalk. I mean, you can just jump right into the painting of the outlines if you want, but I find the chalk is helpful because it's not perfect every time. You can erase the chalk, kind of redo it, get it the way you like it, then lock it in with the paint. I'm not going to do this whole side pocket, but just do enough to show you the technique. And that's probably enough. So you can see there's a difference between the highlight edge and the off-white underneath. And the trick is, again, making sure these values are close enough to each other that uh, it doesn't look too harsh, that the off-white doesn't get too brown, uh, that it looks natural when you're done with the highlighting as opposed to a bunch of scaly feathers sticking out on the side pocket. Now I'm going to use a little angle brush. This is probably a quarter inch wide and it's kind of a stiff brush that I've used for quite a while. And I'm gonna go in and follow my guidelines and put more paint at the tip of the feather and then use the chisel shape to begin blending that out into this darker value. You may have to go over it a few times to get the highlight light enough where it shows up. And then I'm just kind of lightening the pressure as I go down on the feather 
to blend that out and allow this base value to stay. So I'm gonna quickly do that on multiple feathers. And this little chisel shape brush is stiff enough that I can force paint down into the texture a little bit, which is helpful. Make sure I'm still in the viewfinder here. So I'm just hitting all of these feathers and working to get a nice soft blend between the lighter tip and the darker base of the feather. Go up to the top of the side pocket here, same thing. I've got quite a bit of paint on to begin with and hit the edge with quite a bit of paint. I'm hitting all these edges because the brush has got quite a bit of paint on it. And then I'm going back with less paint on the brush and doing my scrubbing. And the texture that we put on there helps in this scrubbing process because it basically helps remove paint from the brush when there's not a lot of paint in the brush. So it's a, it's a nice way of blending. Uh, you can use an airbrush for this process. I'm just not a big fan of airbrushes because of the, the maintenance that they require and the time it takes to set up a new color, etc. Nothing against airbrushes, it's just, I, and I do use them, I just use them sparingly. And I prefer to blend like this when I can. So I'm going to keep working on this, but I think I've shown you enough of this first technique to give you the idea. And it just takes some practice. And I would encourage you to use a, a piece of wood or a board or a a palette and you can do that it doesn't have to be three-dimensional to practice this and you just have to get a feel for how the paint comes off of the brush and there's no substitute for practice and, ga and gaining confidence in the in what you're doing I'll be back in a second. If you want to add a little brighter value to the tip of the feather, I'm taking some titanium white and just hitting the tips. Just for demonstration purposes, it's pretty subtle, the difference between the titanium white and the white gesso. But it's another tool you can use if you want your feathers to pop a little bit more. Now I'm just using some clear water on a clean brush and you can just kind of pull that through lightly. We don't want to remove all the painting that we've done but uh, this has a tendency to kind of blend things together. And it'll darken the lights and lighten the darks a little bit and pull things together. Uh, so I use that technique quite a bit for blending purposes. It just kind of softens the look. And that's going to be hard to see in the video, but uh, that helps pull it all together. Just give you a quick close-up of that. And you can stop there. Depends on how much detail you want on your bird. I'm going to take it the next step and add a few splits. This is where you have to use your judgment. I'm using the original base color and I added just a touch of raw umber to it. Just slightly darken the value so that these splits do show up. And you can go back and forth, add uh, 
gesso, if they're too dark, we want these to be subtle. So we should be able to use almost the base off-white color. And remember that the paint darkens slightly as it dries. So I'm just pulling a few splits. And notice on this side of the feather, I mean, these are kind of basics, but that's what we're covering here. I'm starting at the edge and pulling kind of in an arc because the quill of the feather is right in the center here. And these barbs go in this direction and these go in this direction. So to make it look natural, you want to pull your splits down in the appropriate direction. And to help yourself with that, I didn't do this, but I will because I think it is helpful. We can take some gesso and go in and then actually put in the, the quill. Start at the base and kind of make it fade out. And you make it fade out by lifting the brush off the surface. Wide down here and as you pull back in a little bit of an arc, pull up on the brush so that it leaves the surface and it leaves a very thin line at the tip of the feather, which is what you want. And sometimes putting the quills in helps give you some guidance then on as we're adding the splits. Okay, let's go back to the splits. Now that we have the quills in place, going back to the off-white color. I'm going to Add a little bit of raw umber because I can't see those splits there. And just try to vary the splits so there's not anything regular. You don't want anything regular about these splits. And you just use your judgment on how many look good. Kind of like prunes. How many are enough? How many are too much? Okay. So that's very quick. Uh, but hopefully that gives you the idea. I'm going to do one more thing. And that is you may want to go back and put in a few feather barbs. Again, I'll go back to the white gesso, so the brighter value. And on the edges of some of these feathers, the barbs tend to splay out a little bit. So by picking your locations kind of strategically, see how I've laid a few barbs over this darker base value. There, I've got too much water in the brush. Happens. So I'm going to take that off. Get too much water in the brush, it's going to start to flood paint on the surface, and you don't, you don't want that. So I'm going in kind of to the, here's a dark area next to a light area. And these barbs can have a tendency to splay out a little and be open more at the base of the feather. So it's just a little detail that you can choose to, to use or put that in your arsenal. I could go back in this direction with a few as well. So if you look right there, it just puts a little detail. Now, when you're done painting, take a look at how things are looking. And if it's too much contrast between the dark and the light white, 
there are times that I'll go back and pull things together. I'll take a little of the base color, water that down on a filbert brush, and just pull it through the entire thing after the paint is dried so that you're not removing the work that you've already done. But a little bit of a wash like that can tone things down, pull things together so that it's more subtle look when you're done. If it's a little too dark, you might want to go the other direction with a light, a lighter wash and lighten things up overall with a thin wash of the gesso. It depends on how much detail you want to go into, but you can also go from those barbs and pull in a few flow, uh, feather barb flow lines, I call them, to just add a little bit of texture to the feathers and I'm avoiding the darker splits and just kind of going around and adding a few lighter details to convey the look of feathers. Just thought I'd throw in a still photo here so you can see uh, the finished product. Again, this was a quick job, but gives you the concepts. Well, I had intended to do both white on white and black on black in the same video, but we're already up to about 26 to 30 minutes on this current video, and I don't want these to be too long. And uh, by separating them, maybe it's even better because you can pull up the one that you're working on at the time and not uh, have to suffer through the whole video black white at the same time so i'll do a separate video black on black this is tom christie i hope this technique has been helpful and you can use that on a variety of birds until next time tom christie signing out good carving good painting to you